Good morning, everyone who are joining us from North America. Good afternoon to all our European attendees. And a very good evening to everybody who is joining in from India and rest of the Asia Pacific. We will get started with our webinar uh, in just one more minute. We'll probably give a couple of seconds for some other folks to join in, and we'll get started. All right, I think we should get started. Welcome, everyone, to the Signity webinar on staying a step ahead with DevSecOps. So as we all know, 2017 and 18 has been an absolutely crazy uh, year in terms of uh, cybersecurity. There were critical infrastructure attacks. There were, we dealt with insecure databases, hacks, breaches, and probably leaks of unprecedented scale, uh, which impacted institutions around the globe. Um, and of course, with that, billions of people who trust them with their data uh, were also um, not very happy with the state of things. This list uh, also includes uh, some of the worst hacks in history of mankind, such as Equifax, where cyber criminals penetrated one of the largest credit bureaus in July and stole the personal data of probably almost 145 million people. It was considered amongst one of the worst breaches of all time because of the amount of sensitive information which got exposed, including social security numbers. Um, there was another one, which was WannaCry, which spanned more than 150 countries and leveraged some of uh, leaked NSA tools. In our current time, when the time to market, everyone is thinking about it, everyone wants to be the fastest, and that's the ultimate and utmost important thing, application security is seen as an inhibitor. Security infrastructure has failed to align itself with the age agility of uh, DevOps, I would say. Hence, applications created are using vulnerable, open source, and uh, probably pre-built components which are not security tested enough. Now, it is time we start using and accepting secure development and testing practices and processes and take a stride towards DevSecOps. Without further delay, let me introduce our speakers, Rajesh, from Signity and Lucas from Microfocus. So Rajesh is a security architect with about 18 plus years of experience in delivering end-to-end -end security testing and engineering activities. He has been a critical part of the solution designing team that provides DevOps solution for enterprise level clients. Rajesh has been a speaker at numerous conferences. He also holds multiple patents to his name. I have the pleasure of also introducing Lucas Lucas is the senior product manager of application security at Microfocus. He handles the entire Fortify portfolio. This includes Fortify's product vision and strategy for markets leading AppSec offerings on the on-premise as well as the SaaS based solutions. So without further delay, I would like to hand it over to Rajesh who will take you through the remaining part of the presentation and probably towards uh, the, after a while, Rajesh would hand it over to Lucas so that he could have he could present his section of the presentation. Over to you, Rajesh. Thanks, Shubindu. Um, I am uh, super excited um, to be part of this forum. Uh, it's an exciting topic. Uh, DevSecOps, sec how do you implement? Uh, um, what are the considerations? What's the value chain on offer from MicroFocus? Um, uh, so, Primarily today, what we will do is try to understand a little bit more deeper to understand what, what the intricacies are and what should we sort of juggle with in terms of speed and security, um, deal that topic and then um, uh, try understanding how we could probably, there's no silver bullet solution for, uh, for striking a balance between speed and security. Uh, but um, based on the best practices we have inculcated uh, from our vast uh, engagements, which we have done, uh, both in terms of variety and volume, um, we at Signity have uh, come up with a framework which will help us to sort of choose the good practices across the clientele and then uh, bring to bear uh, the, the solutions uh, along with MicroFocus. So, I also have uh, Lucas with me who will help us uh, sort of deep dive on the value chain from MicroFocus to uh, to help you understand how this can be done uh, with their set of offerings. 
so we will move on um, in terms of the agenda so there has always been this challenge of uh, speed uh, in, in the way we would deliver uh, software so the recent research report has pointed out that the top three drivers for digital enterprises has been uh, speed to market um, customer satisfaction and profitability so there has been um, uh, sort of a consensus in the boardroom that speed of innovation uh, is a strategic differentiation in the marketplace it is no longer okay uh, for the cio and his teams to just stay lights on without delivering value in terms of uh, the new releases so it it is more a survival of uh, the fastest rather than the fittest anymore so it is increasingly imperative uh, that the cio and his team deliver new new value much faster than they would have imagined uh, probably 2 or 3 years ago so most of us think probably uh, there is a hype cycle and thereby uh, there are a lot of activities happening in the agile and devops world uh, but it is heartening to see there are multiple teams and clients who have worked with us who have delivered close to 100 plus changes uh, in in a month or 20 plus changes in a in a day and that's the speed at at which software is getting delivered um, uh, not to name the amazons of the world who are sort of changing and updating software for every 11 seconds so we'll we'll take a poll now to understand the lay of the land uh, in terms of what you practice as the delivery methods okay so uh, so the results are um, i think uh, devops is 27% Agile stands uh, at thirty-three percent, and a hybrid sort of delivery method stands at thirty-three percent. So there's fairly um, sort of interest in terms of the new delivery methods, uh, in terms of improving um, the speed of uh, software which is getting delivered. So it it looks like an interesting audience where we are speaking to, in terms of the adoption of agile and DevOps. going to the other dimension of going to the other dimension of uh, security failures so we know that um, we need to deliver at speed but security failures are taking uh, taking a center stage uh, probably few years ago um, a bug would probably qualify for a functional defect or a usability or performance but then what we see um in in this context is that the security failures have become more prominent there's more attention uh to this sort of testing and verification processes which are uh, taking place and no industry has been left out if if you see the sort of analysis which has been done security is second to all other common software defects uh, which we would find and and this is really taking center stage right now and uh, if you re really need to sort of balance speed versus security you might have to carve out a specific set of processes or methodologies to understand how you would deliver this and this is completely aligned to a specific context and culture for that specific organization so we will start another poll to understand what what the audience think about uh, will they choose speed versus security or would they think that by adding security would they really increase time to market okay to 
to sort of analyze the um, poll, I think 50% of you feel that it will increase. Um, 30% or close to 40% say we don't know, just probably figuring it out. Um, and no, it will not probably is close to 10% or 11%. So let us see what what the analyst community has to say. Um, it, it's a this is probably a research done two years ago. So it is in line with what we are seeing uh, from the audience poll. 80% of them said a resounding yes and 20% probably no. So it's very close to what what we are seeing uh, from from our polls as well. It's also heartening to see that 20% of the organizations have adopted and I'm trying are attempting to respond to the speed versus sort of security challenge. We know that uh, this is not going to be a sort of silver bullet set of processes which we could adapt so that we will be able to sort of balance this whole uh, speed versus security. But each organization is unique and that's what we will sort of dwell into details on how we have helped various organizations to go through this process and try to balance speed and security so that you get the maximum business value for your um, for your customers. So I think uh, the puzzle what we are trying to solve is not to sort of put brakes in your speed to deliver software, but still find opportunities which you could use to build security or embed security in. Few years ago, probably five, six years ago, I was part of a client conversation with a CIO where uh, the client CIO was from an Australia uh, utilities and we were trying to explain to him how we were trying to build our delivery model. And uh, we had run an initiative called uh, industrialization uh, coupled with intelligence. And we wanted to showcase to him how we managed to ramp up the rate of changes which we were putting the whole um, software delivery life cycle with a lot of automation um, using data from production and trying to solve the incidents and trying to meet our SLAs. And, the ha and he had this unique uh, question for us in terms of, he asked us how many severity one incidents have been there in the last quarter for us. So we did say three and um, he had a large smile at us and he was trying to tell us that he had zero incidents in the last quarter. And then we were not sure how to respond to this because we really had three incidents in the last and in the last quarter, uh, in the overall quarter, and we had to sort of come back and say, okay, in the next slide, we will tell you how many changes did we do uh, to the production and how did we manage the agility in this overall cycle. So we showed him that we had done 50 such changes. This is like six to seven years ago. We never called that initiative as DevOps, but we had figured out how to do this via collaboration and breaking the barriers between the support and testing teams and the ops team um, closely working with each other and delivering value for our client, which would mean uh, a lot of changes to production, but still completely under control. We had our mean time to repair as less as two hours for all seven incidents. So the rate at which we were delivering amazed the CIO. And at that point in time, we did not really sort of name it DevOps, but looking at where we are, probably we could have done that and our resumes would have been much brighter in the market. So I think each organization has its own context and culture, and we need to figure out how to sort of embed security in and which is going to be the cornerstone to deliver the expected speed that you want to 
um, deliver software as well as balance it with uh, security. And as I said, there is no silver bullet. We could, uh, we need to understand the context and the culture so that we could embed. Of course, there are best practices that we could apply. Uh, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And we need to continuously collaborate with our stakeholders to get where we want to. So to start with, I think we are talking about looking at the planning phase and analysis for security requirements. Here we could focus on understanding what technical requirements need to be established early in the life cycle so that the developers have an expectation set so that they can translate the requirements into the design and the code so that they could deliver a product which is of superior quality. Uh, there are multiple ways to do that um, and thereby you would be able to set the expectations rather than testing in for quality. Um, building quality upstream is going to be important. And if you tell your developers that this is what is expected, more clearly articulated, probably 100 times out of 99, he would do that for you. Similarly, while you are part of the testing phase, uh, use your tools and techniques to sort of run through your use and abuse cases, uh, some of the tooling as well as some of uh, manual stuff as well and exploratory and during the release phase um, continuous infra validation um, across and and if you take i think shubendu did mention about uh, equifax uh, the the if you sort of double click and understand what what was the root cause of um, such a such a huge issue in terms of data theft and uh, if you see the only uh, one of the root causes, if I would say, is they probably did not have an updated software patch for which there was a vulnerable software lurking around. And uh, if they had some shape or form of DevOps, probably they would have used the automated tools to ensure that all the systems are patched. Um, so you, you might call it DevOps, you might call it whatever philosophy, but then trying to understand uh, your culture and context to suit what what works and thereby setting a framework which will help you to sort of deliver the value is going to be key. So moving on, we at um, uh, Signity have a framework called Gate, which helps us to sort of balance between uh, delivering software at speed versus uh, making it secure, helping our clients ensure that. So Create framework helps us to move from the traditional DevOps mature clients to DevSecOps. And we have been um, sort of rolling out multiple initiatives for our clients where um, they have a great governance uh, to gain visibility to ensure that uh, quality gates are implemented, identify the roles and responsibilities, get the visibility of what, what the application under test is undergoing in terms of quality and testing and uh, verification procedures. So gaining the visibility of what what's uh, happening in your software delivery lifecycle, um, ensuring that you have the right quality gates would eventually help you to sort of understand the risk and the compliance issues you might face and uh, thereby helping your um, your client to gain visibility. And while you put through, put together your pipelines, I think helping to qualify the right uh, scoring mechanism so that you can fail your builds, thereby a cultural change needs to be triggered, which will eventually help you to build quality um, so that you can do it right the first time rather than fixing something which is already delivered to production. And even if you reflect, I think uh, DevOps practices in some shape or form help you to gain the agility which you would require. Probably if Equifax had some of these processes, they would probably have chances of putting things in production much faster so that they can respond to the threats which are continuously coming into the system. So moving on to the next aspect, automation, I think the, most of the automation aspects would uh, we've been using uh, MicroFocus, uh, and we are a great fan of MicroFocus tools. Uh, we we have um, 
lot of integrations built as part of the security framework to to the micro focus tools to gain the visibility which our client needs and uh, i think lucas will delve deeper into uh, the features so that you can get a sense of how this is um, this is useful uh, for our clients and um, moving on to the topic of training um, we have built multiple course courses to address the awareness of Uh, employees across the client organization so that from developers to the administrators to the super admins who have um, uh, privileges so that they can take care uh, of anything that is um, that is required for that skill so that um, they are ready to address these issues uh, from a security standpoint and engineering um, the whole philosophy of building quality upstream is critical for us and uh, we have implemented in some of our large projects uh, what we call as fast functional application security testing we use functional test cases to sort of give or gain insights into security aspects of the software thereby reusing the whole effort be it automated regression test packs or functional test packs so i'll move on i think um, uh um, we'll ask lucas to continue on the automation pieces uh, for microfocus thank you rajesh um yeah so talking talking about automation in in the whole context of security testing what you can see here is actually the microfocus 45 portfolio in terms of what we can can deliver and this is starting on the upper left side with static analysis where in static analysis we are actually looking at the source code or as at the binary of an application to understand which vulnerabilities or potential the um, vulnerabilities are actually um, in the application the big benefit of that one obviously is that this can be done very very early in the development um cycle so we can start with our security assistant technology in in the actually in the IDE while the developer is typing the code and giving immediate feedback to the developer um even before he's saving um saving the file so giving giving the first feedback there but then having built integration um while the the code is built into um into the final application or even intermediate into in into any stage of the application so we can um figure out certain vulnerabilities and um feed that back immediately to the developer um not only is this very early in the life cycle of an application um from a technical point of view but it has very detailed information as well which is the other big benefit as we are looking at the code as we are looking at the binary statically without executing the application we can give the line of code details to the developer as well so that he can immediately understands um where he has to fix the issue so um, with that one that's um that's really the earliest stage where a technical um way of looking at an application is possible and um, very helpful for the developer going further in terms of automation is when you have um a more or less readily developed application um or at least an application um which is executable in a web application which is um executable we can run so called dynamic analysis or dask dast dynamic application security testing and um we can actually look at the application from the outside um have web inspect um just by providing the url um scrolling through the application understanding the complete application context and then executing attack attack patterns like an attacker would potentially do these attack patterns to understand where there are potential vulnerabilities again in the application that is obviously um a little bit later in the in the webs in in the development cycle because you have to have an executable application a running application but again the big benefit here is that those issues which you find are um, definitely issues um, which are more or less non disputable right the um 
because you can um, find them and, and, and detect them from the outside, as well as it's you do not necessarily need access to the source code. So um, even if you get an external application, you can run these types of tests against the um, against the application without having access to the source code, without having potentially um, direct access to the developer. Um, so again, um, a very um, detailed way of testing and highly automizable, which I will um, show in a few minutes. Um, the third part is actually application protection with Application Defender, where we can instrument the applications while they're executed. Um, on the production server to understand what is actually happening inside the application while it's executed, to understand if there are certain attacks ongoing and if these attacks are ongoing, then redirect the attacker to a standard error page, for example. That's the one, um, the one important part. The other important part is actually that um, we can monitor with the same technology the application from the inside, again, to understand what is ongoing in the application. So for example, if you, um, if you see on a database level that potentially an SQL injection is ongoing, you might have issues to understand which user is actually logged into the application and executing um, these attacks because um, on the on the database level you only see the standard database user executing the um, the SQL statement. So um, with the monitoring part of Application Defender, you can understand right now um, which user is logged in and which user is running the application from inside the application. And you can report that to any CM system um, so that you can actually correlate that data and understand what is ongoing in your application. And with that, you actually um, reduce the way of the um, black box, which for a lot of CM systems like ArcSight, for example, actually um, an application is, because for um, CM system, it is quite difficult to look inside the application. Um, so this is just the way how we can um, can detect and monitor um, vulnerabilities, or if we go from the left, weaknesses, um, potential vulnerabilities and attacks, and we can correlate and and, um, and visualize all that with our vulnerability management, which we have in two ways. We have the software security center, which is um, um, installed on premise, so you can run all these things actually being installed on your site, or as a service um, where um, this is delivered um, to you, you just um, provide the URL, you just provide the source code, and the scan is um, executed centrally. Um, and um, yeah, it's ha it's happening more or less in the same way. The um, the one side, um, if we go on this lower level to the right side, um, is obviously to create KPIs to understand the overall risk which your applications are. Um, are giving to your um, to the risk posture of your company um, or adding to it, but that's only one part of the um, of the equation, right? Because if we um, know and it. Um, like um, it has been presented before by Rogers, um, that um, we actually know that our applications are vulnerable. So um, we potentially do not know how vulnerable, but we know they are vulnerable and, and at risk. So the more important part is actually to um, remediate all these issues. So we have all the integrations into the um, into the remediation cycles, like um, into the IDEs again, right? We can feed these results back into the IDEs, into Eclipse, into Visual Studio. We can integrate into into um, bug tracking solutions, um, so that actually the information is going back to the developer, and the developer can fix the application, um, so that the ultimate um, outcome of all this is actually um, that we have more secure applications and um, that um, our applications are harder to um, not at all being attackable anymore. So if we put all that into the context of, um, of um, DevOps, obviously the question is where um, are these technologies more or less best applied? And um, definitely static analysis has its, um, its masterpiece, let's say it like that, um, it's its main purpose during the creation of an application, right? So while you're typing the code, 
um, latest before you um, before you um, yeah, go live, um, your, um, meaning within the build, um, you should check the application so that you're as early as possible informed about um, all potential weaknesses in the application. Um, the dynamic testing, um, as I said before, um, you need a running application, an executable application for that one. So this is typical during the verification stage, right? Um, and then we have the real-time application self-protection um, or RASP, which is the application defender part, which is mainly um, um, or has its, its masterpiece um, during operations in order to detect the attacks which are ongoing. So how does this look like actually if you um, if you um, install a static analysis for example um, into a development environment um, so what developers normally do out of their IDE they um, check in into the source code, um, source control repository, um, the the code which they create, and that triggers normally um, a build step, right? And it can be in a in continuous integration server, it can be a nightly build, but this build step is actually triggered, and you can have um, then starting and with within that build a static assessment where you um, look at the source code to understand the weaknesses which are in the application. In terms of, of timing, if we are um, talking about smaller applications and smaller applications is actually something which becomes pretty typical, especially if you look into the DevOps area um, where, um, where, where you talk a lot about microservices, for example. So um, on average, and this is what we know with our SaaS service, we can scan um, statically applications, smaller applications around 100,000 lines of code um, under 10 minutes on average. So this is actually really going um, quick and you can um, then have an automated audit on, on these vulnerabilities. And um, with that, you actually get, get already a pretty good understanding in terms of, um, of which of these found vulnerabilities are actually, um, or weaknesses are actually um, things which have to be fixed and which of these are actually um, weaknesses which you might want to leave for, for later because they do not pose you into an immediate risk. And I will come to that automated audit in a second um, because the other way um, obviously to go through that is a manual audit. So having somebody really look at the results, understanding the results and, and saying, um, okay, this is really an issue which has to be fixed or this is actually something um, which, um, is is not as important and and can be actually left alone. Um, so after these decisions have been taken, either automatically or out, um, manual or both, actually, you can actually um, push those issues which need to be fixed into your preferred defect management system, um, being at Bugzilla, being at Octane, whatever um, you name it, um, so that. From there, the developers actually understand which issues have to be fixed. And then um, actually they fix the code and um, the whole cycle starts again. So this is really completely integrated into the, um, into the development process and can really help to streamline the way of how applications are coded nowadays. Um, and with that, obviously, that you do not have a big testing cycle at the end of, um, of a sprint, for example, that allows you to um, actually do not reduce um, the, um, or increase the time you need um, to deploy an application because you fix the issues really close to the moment when they, when they are created. Um, so talking about um, this automated um, um, automated auditing, um, actually we call it Fortify um, Audit Assistant, which is a machine learning where you send metadata, and this is from the left side, you send metadata um, for into into this artificial intelligence, into this machine learning, and they are based off thousands of audited FPR files of audited results um, 
there is actually a prediction being done of this type of an issue is actually in 99% of the cases, it is a real issue or it is something which can be left alone. So you get these predictions back. And based on these predictions, you can actually make a decision, for example, if you want to fail a build and do not want to go live with the build. That is absolutely possible. So um, that would be um, clearly the ultimate DevOps. That would not be um, not be really agile anymore. It would be clear DevOps that you um, based on that decision um, or based on that results, make the decision if you can go live um, or not with that build. Um, you can feedback um, the information of your manual audit as well in order to um, train this artificial intelligence further. Um, um, and you can make your own predictions there. You can, um, you can have your own trainings. All that is possible um, in order to do. So that was for static analysis, for dynamic analysis. That doesn't look um, too much different, actually. If you look at the developer checking in source code again, you see that you have your continuous integration server, which is then automatically deploying the application. And from there, you can trigger as well a dynamic scan, um, which would then go through the application. And that can be a part of the application, which is only the, the new pages which have been added to the application application or you can take the full application and with that you um, get vulnerabilities back um, again which can then can be reviewed and again put via the vulnerability management into a defect um, defect management of your choice so that again you can give those results um, to the developers so that they are going to fix um, the issues yes um, again, this is um, technically a little bit later in the standard development lifecycle because you have to have an executable application. On the other side, if you're talking about real DevOps, right, this cycle is actually going through with every um, with every deployment. Um, if you if you really go for the deployment, so you can run through the static analysis um, very quickly, have your automated decision of going live yes or no and then um, if you if you want to go to the next step you can actually run the dynamic analysis um, again you can make an automated decision here in order to go live yes or no and then you would deploy your application into production obviously if um, if the tests here are um, not showing any any red flags and any um, reasons to stop the the go live and on the other side if your if your functional test have been successful as well but it can be added in that part so that is a possibility here you see and i will not read that complete slide to you um, but um, all the integrations so you see um, again the secure de development so the um, the static testing actually the um, the testing um, part which is the dynamic testing and the continuous monitoring and protection which is the runtime we have swaggerized um, all the apis around that with that you can integrate into actually any more or less any tool of your choice we have certain um, integrations built ourselves um, like into build servers with uh, jenkins bamboo visual studio team services um, we have integrations we have integrations into build tools like n maven gradle make um, so you see we don't even list anything here everything here um, we have um, chef, chef um, scripts available already. We integrate into open source testing technologies like Sonatype, um, like Black Duck. And as I mentioned before, we have integrations into IDEs. So you can integrate into all these different environments in order to make it as easy as possible for your developers in order to use up to the point. What you see here on the right side is the, um, the chat ops technology um, where we can actually um, integrate um, with um, Slack um, so that you can get immediate feedback there. 
and um, yeah, just just a little bit of marketing. Um, as you can see here by um, Gartner, we have been um, just rated again um, as a leader in the Magic Quadrant for application secure testing. I joined Fortify in 2008. I was um, um, part of Fortify already when the first um, Gartner Magic Quadrant came out in 2009. At that point in time, only for static application security testing and um, we have been a leader since that um, that magic quadrant. So um, I think that's that's qu um, quite a track record of um, of um, Gartner magic quadrants and customers we have here during that time. And with that, um, Rajas, um, that was just a quick overview of the technology behind all that. Um, back to you. Thank you, Lucas. Um, yeah. So I think um, one of the, or, or two or three of the key. Key items um, to sort of reiterate, especially uh, with micro focus, um, micro focuses ability and the entire value chain, the ability to provide uh, quick feedback uh, to the developers. I think that is uh, really critical uh, part of the overall ecosystem in terms of running it less than 10 minutes uh, in terms of their entire um, code base and then giving a quick feedback so that they can take a decision to uh, get the build uh, failed or uh, providing instant feedback uh, via the add-ins so that the developers while they type in the code so these are all um, things which which really accelerate um, your entire value creation process and also sort of balances out um, the security aspects because th this is going to be really critical for us to sort of push the cash in, in terms of the speed at which we want to deliver but not compromise on uh, quality. Of course, you could engage third party uh, organizations to do your regular ethical hacking but ensuring that you do uh, the best practices right, you do things um, are conscious about what you want to build uh, from an application standpoint and make it secure while you do that uh, is going to be really critical. The second aspect uh, which we had uh, leveraged for multiple clients of us has been the ability to get insights from um, the predictive mechanisms which are there, uh, the probabilities which are uh, getting created and this is useful to develop a scoring mechanism and uh, help you build uh, quality gates. And uh, this has been uh, um, sort of uh, capability that has come from Microfocus, which has helped us to build that um, uh, sort of as part of the pipeline. And uh, we also have built some custom uh, AI algorithms for our clients uh, to further bolster what we are uh, seeing, uh, which will help us to sort of strengthen this uh, capability uh, based on the context and data we have uh, for some on-premise uh, installations which you have done and uh, uh, execution as part of the overall pipeline. And of course, uh, there are a lot of APIs which you could use, uh, which you could query back on the product and then build your um, dashboard so that you gain the visibility and help your governance uh, structure to uh, sort of facilitate and give the visibility back to the executive management. So moving on, uh, we will talk about a case in a point. Um, I'm uh, sort of excited about this specific client where we did this journey. Um, they were not um, uh, pure DevOps sort of shop when we started and uh, they had this traditional problem which we just spoke about. The, the focus was on delivering software, the speed at which they deliver, but I think they had uh, challenges in sort of balancing this out. Um, so the whole journey started uh, where we had to do a pilot and their focus was to get uh, compliant uh, from a PCI standpoint. And uh, we had sort of did a small pilot for them to sort of assess where they stand, would they really meet their goals in terms of the PCI deadline and uh, sort of understanding where they stand from a quality 
uh, focusing on security and uh, we had a lot of challenges um, one of them of course is the poor coding standard multiple teams delivering software lack of security awareness and finally uh, the biggest challenge for us was non availability of the automated test packs so we were not too sure if we could meet the timelines probably we could get more developers on board get these fixed but we were not very sure about the quality uh, impact because of the change we would introduce hence uh, we had to take a step back and say okay interim we probably go as a workaround from using a waf and then long term we would um, institutionalize a security assurance program which will deal this much comprehensively uh, than what we would have dealt by just fixing and meeting the pci deadline so inherently we have used um, open sam frameworks to do the assessment um, looked at uh, the entire gamut of how they deliver software what sort of govern governing structures are there uh, how do you ensure uh, the right people are getting trained in terms of security the tooling um, what sort of verification procedures are being adopted and how do we um, sort of address uh, the on demand uh, request from the developers uh, from a user standpoint so all of this assessment had uh, sort of resulted and then we have set up a team um both the on site and offshore to sort of liaise with the developers uh, not just focusing on um, sort of executing the sas and the das test but also focusing on improving their ability to uh, to get instant feedback from uh, from the test runs they would do bolstering their current pipelines in terms of adding additional security verification and uh, validation uh, procedures so that they they get their builds right they get their deployments right from a security standpoint and uh, there is again no hard and fast rule we have clients who get instant feedback uh, less than 10 minutes from a security standpoint there are clients based on their culture and context of what they do probably they run uh, additional pipeline sort of stages um, every sort of 6 hours or 12 hours so e each client is unique in the way they deliver software and the speed at which they want to deliver so uh, it is going to be a unique uh, sort of attention that needs to be sort of evolved and process and procedures so that we can construct a pipeline which does all the verification and validation so i did mention a couple of times about the security assurance program which we sort of set up for them we also give um, insights into the entire program um, this is sort of a data dashboard but then it will give you a view of how we are trying to inculcate a, a security mindset our ability to cover the applications uh, in terms of quality uh, increasing the organization awareness in terms of uh, the trainings uh, the programs which we conduct across the levels and tiers and skills so that they are aware of security and um, can play a critical role because quality is not going to be just the testing teams ownership but it's a shared responsibility across the organization uh, to create value uh, like i said uh, we do a lot of automation um, and also integrated um, part of the pipeline so that uh, the efficiency is increased and the feedback loops are coming in as fast as possible so that uh, whenever there is an issue or vulnerability found an audit happens in an automated or in a manual way so that that feedback is going and uh, we also sort of monitor the fix rate uh, so that uh, we understand um, what the trainings and awareness sessions are having an impact are the developers able to fix much faster than they were before and of course we have a constant uh, eye on the compliance that we want to meet uh, and we are able to sort of give that perspective back to them and uh, we also built um, sort of data source is to compare our clients technology stack uh, with their uh, domain and technology to 
give them a perspective of how they are doing or beating the industry benchmark so that uh, there's enough motivation for the developers and the entire stakeholders, uh, be it architects, be it the ops team to get a sense of where we are. So, and of course, uh, the moving target of open vulnerabilities, which will, uh, we always want to keep them down so that uh, we deliver better software every day. So I think um, that's pretty much what we wanted to cover today. Um, so we'll um, wait for the audience for our, from a question standpoint. Uh, Lucas, do you want to spend a couple of minutes on this slide before we invite um, questions? Well, absolutely, I, I, I can do. So while, while we are getting questions in, and I um, answered a few already in, in the chat window, um, these are just two um, interesting books. The left one, actually, I read 10 years ago all, already. It's great to, um, if, if you have nothing to do with, um, with um, application security yet, it's actually um, a great starting point. It's a novel. Um, Clifford Stahl was one of the guys who, um, who, um, yeah, traced down one of the first hacks um, um, 30 years ago. Um, pretty interesting read, um, and you understand suddenly the um, the big impact of small issues in applications can actually have. Overall, um, the the right book, which is actually probably from the um, from the same time, somewhere written in in the in the mid 90s, it's actually. Um, um, after reading it, you see a pretty interesting um, analogy in from from standard building, from standard engineering, like bridges you can see here, like airplanes, whatever. We have to learn as a development community. We have to learn to understand out of our mistakes, um, which we which we do and which are constantly in the press and um, like with Equifax have been. Um, have become pretty, pretty visible. We have to really understand the reasons why these issues ha happen and then go back to our existing developments and fix these issues, which is something at the moment, at least I still have the feeling um, um, a lot of people do not do or a lot of companies um, are actually afraid of doing just because of, um, yeah, um, undisputable, um, uh, higher cost but um overall we have to understand that we have to bring down this amount huge amount of vulnerabilities because otherwise the the internet um, might become a place which is just very very dangerous and and um, if the end consumer will stop um, or reduce the amount of, of um, things he's doing in the internet, we will definitely all suffer from that. So at one point in time, we have to get this um, secure. That's just yeah, my overall message. So let's see um, what this question is coming. Um, 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 well, um, they, I, I see um, the the question here in terms of of DevSecOps may take more time than DevOps. I would say in general, um, and Rajas, um, I hope you have an opinion to that one as well. Just my opinion, DevSecOps, DevSecOps, or as I say, DevOps, um, as I do not like the word DevSecOps, as I explained before, um, but DevOps, including security, should necessarily not take much longer or any longer than um, than standard um, DevOps without security, because um, these are just automated tests, and if the code is developed in a secure way, um, these tools will hopefully not even find anything. Um, so, um, so there will be no delay. It's just a little bit of automated testing. It's a few minutes. Um, as I said, 100,000 lines of code application um, scans on average in less than 10 minutes. Um, I think that is not really a delay in terms of, of DevOps, right? Um, that's the one thing. On the other side, if you um, if you would miss a vulnerability and have to pull back an um, an application which has gone live with a with a huge security vulnerability, or if you find yourself in an um, in a situation like Equifax where you suddenly recognize that. Um, 
that um, ton of information has been lost and you need to fix that. I can promise you that the amount of effort um, which is going in there will blast away every little delay which you will um, potentially have if you would have done security um, immediately because then you can only focus on that one. You cannot focus on delivering new functionality um, anymore or anything like this. The focus will um, be much higher on that one. But um, yeah, Rajas, um, I'm pretty sure you have an opinion on that one as well. Yeah, I think um, uh, definitely with a lot of automation kicking in and the way you want to contextualize for your client, I think it's going to be important and critical part of when you want to introduce this. What I would, um, I, I think, Lucas, you did uh, summarize all the aspects, but uh, taking a very pragmatic and practical view, right? For a CIO, if the project is over budget, um, he might be in some sort of a trouble. Uh, but you have a quality issue and that too in a security space, he might be as well on the block. So it's going to be uh, really critical. Uh, and, and this is a balance uh, which, which we need to sort of handle this speed to market vis a vis uh, security. So it's going to be a pragmatic case by case. But there are tools uh, which can help you sort of um, move around and make sure that you uh, you are able to balance that out and each organization is unique there is no one silver bullet how you manage this so it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to do that uh, for your specific speed and, and scale yeah all right thank you so much uh, thank you so much Rajesh and uh, thanks so much Lucas it has been a really engaging webinar there have been so many questions and I'm sure uh, all the entire audience would have enjoyed the session uh, really well. If you have any further questions, because we are running short of time, um, uh, please feel free to send your questions to marketing at signity.com. Um, I will, um, so you will anyway receive a, a link to the recording of the webinar. Um, so you can just respond to that email with your questions. If it is directed to only Rajesh, or only Lucas, we will be able to make sure that the speakers are responding to your questions. And thank you so much. Um, have a great evening um, and see you soon uh, for our next webinar, which we will be announcing shortly. Thank you so much, everyone.